Hi there, I'm Dave Burse. I'm the author of How to Get to Great Ideas, and I want to tell you about a digital exercise, a digital tool that I've created, which is all about trying to build the muscles in your brain that lead to ideas. So one of the things that we know is that a lot of ideas are actually recombinations of existing elements. They come together to create something new. And that's exactly what this tool is about. So let's get into it. This tool is the This and That Creativity Exercise. So I've got my computer here. I shall just type in the URL, which is daveburse.com. Oh, I can't even spell my own name. Look at that. DaveBurst.com slash this and that. Right. And this gives us the tool. All right, let's get into it. So the first one it's given us here is confetti and clipboard. And what we're trying to do is bring those two things together to create a few different ideas, preferably. So we're going to try and come up with three ideas for maybe three of these suggestions. So confetti and clipboard. So one of the things we can come up with is that on a form that for people who actually don't want to uh, to fill in a form then what they can do is they can automatically put it through a confetti making machine and then we can get confetti which is made out of recycled um, administrative forms that people didn't want to fill in. There. So we've got one use of it is a confetti making machine uh, to create recycled confetti from administrative forms. Right. Let's come up with something else. Let's look at the idea of a clipboard being something that, you know, it, it grips things. So if you get a stack of little bits of paper and you grip it and you push it really tight, it'll, poof, it'll fire. So maybe we could create something that uses that kind of pressure on a column of confetti that can allow you to fire a load of confetti into the air when the pressure gets too much and it makes all the confetti pop out. So we create a confetti firing gun, uh, a firing mechanism. That's, that's two ideas. Let's see if we can come up with one more. This is, this is when it starts to get quite tough, when you've got more obvious stuff out the road and you start looking for other ideas. So, confetti and uh, clipboard. So let's look at the hardness of the clipboard itself. Uh, how could we turn that into something with confetti? Um, the hardness, we could turn into something that's a bit like a, a table tennis bat, you know, using the sort of hardness of the, the, the back of the board. And we could use that as another way of propelling confetti. So if we create confetti balls, and we have this thing that's like a paddle for table tennis, as soon as you smack it, the ball just explodes into loads and loads of confetti and it just becomes another way of being able to launch confetti into the air. Right, three ideas, two of those ideas were kind of similar, it was all about firing confetti but you know let's see if we can do better on the next exercise. Um, let's see what it comes up with this time. Email and balloon. Jeez. Um, what we could do is we could create a, something to be more like an art um, exhibit. Uh, an art, um, an interactive art installation that you can send an email uh, to this bot. This bot will print out your email and attach it to a piece of string at the bottom of a balloon and fire your email up. And you then may get somebody who will be able to respond to you in the old fashioned way that we used to write notes, send them up in balloons. Certainly they did in the 1970s when I was growing up. I don't know if they have done it since. So there we go. How about another thing that um, you can actually print onto balloons? So you could send someone a message and they can only see the message once they've blown up the balloon and they, you can actually send them a letter written on a balloon. As long as they don't blow too hard and pop the balloon, then they'll be able to read your message. And it also means that if they blow it a little bit harder, the text gets bigger, makes it easier to read. So a way of emailing your message to get printed onto a balloon, somebody blows it up. It's a way of delivering your message. So that's two ways of putting emails onto balloons. Let's see if we can put balloons into emails. Um, so you can email someone something that would be like a balloon. Um, so balloon being something that inflates, something that's filled with air. Um, 
Ah, maybe it's got a similar thing to the sort of blowing up the balloon, things getting larger. It's a way of sending an email to someone that is just a novelty way of doing it. It's this tiny, tiny little block of text and you have to zoom in and zoom in using the sort of pinch and drag on your, on your keypad to actually get into the message. Um, it could be one way of doing it. Maybe that message when it's zoomed out actually makes an image. So it looks like an image, but as you zoom in, the image is actually made up of text and the text is the email that you've sent someone. So you send someone something that looks like an image, but also has the message imprinted in it. I don't quite know how you would do that, but it's, it's an idea that might be something that could be explored. So there, we've got three ideas for this one. Let's go for one more and see if you can get three ideas out of this. Banana and microscope. Well, microscopes are sort of long and thin that you look down. Bananas are curved. Could we create something that uses uh, lenses that means that you can actually look straight ahead and inspect something that's down here? So a bit like a periscope allows you to look out from a different area that you're actually looking into. You look up through the tube and out the top. It would be a similar kind of thing, but what it means is that you don't have to keep hurting your neck by looking down. It means that you can look straight across and just using lenses and mirrors it helps you have a microscope to examine something that's down on the surface there. A more natural way of doing it? Maybe. Second idea on this one. Um, bananas, you peel them. So what we do is we, it's a case for a microscope to keep it safe that actually is a little bit like a banana peel that the microphone, the microphone, the microscope sticks in there and you can just zip it up along the sides and it keeps the whole thing safe. A case for a microscope. Not a fantastic one, but uh, let's see what happens. Um, looking at a banana through a microscope, what is it we could learn? Well, there's all the fibers in the banana skin. Is there something we could do with banana fibers themselves? Maybe we find that banana fibers could actually be woven, could be a form of clothing could be another way so that instead of just throwing the banana skins away, we can actually strip the fibres out of them and start to use them in some constructive way for, for clothing or for some, some other use that could be interesting. Maybe because it's biodegradable, it means that you could create a fabric that actually biodegrades in a better way. Three ideas for that. Now, I'm not saying that any of these ideas are brilliant. There are, a lot of them are very quick first ideas that might lead to something if you do research into them, but uh, some of them, you know, not all ideas are good ideas. Don't ever believe that horrible brainstorm myth is there's no such thing as a bad idea. I'm proving here in this video that there are. Not all these ideas are great. But this is about working your mind muscle here to be able to combine things together. That's the whole point of this exercise. It's good if you can do this on a regular basis. Like maybe if you could do exactly what I've done here, so three prompts every single day. Come up with three ideas for three prompts. It will take you, hopefully from this video, we'll see that this is less than 10 minutes, I'm hoping. Um, but that then becomes something that will help you make connections because your brain will be getting used to it. So it's a great exercise to do. As you can see, if you look on the screen here, if you don't want to watch this video again, of course, uh, you can actually get instructions just in the bottom left, click on the button there, if my internet connection is fast enough, which it isn't really, it will load up the instructions. There we go. So this is the instructions page. As you can see, there actually is a version which is embedded in the page here. And there's the instructions here along with an example of some ideas that I got out from another prompt. So I'm keeping building these tools. There's quite a few. Uh, I ask you to, to use them, try them out, see if they're useful. If you find that there is value in them, please share them with your colleagues, bookmark them, uh, share them with your friends. We want as many people as possible using the tools to make sure that they get as good as, as possible at being able to come up with ideas because the better we get at coming up with ideas, the bigger problems we can solve. I think that that's what humanity is all about and I hope that you agree with me, you'll follow me with that and try and make the world a better place by thinking more powerfully. Thanks for watching. That's me done. Good luck. <laughs>